In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a complete beginner's guide to the Applied Energistics 2 mod. I'm going to teach you everything from getting started all the way up to some more of the advanced features that you might want to use with this mod. Now I'm going to also timestamp it so you can get through to the bits that you want to see. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first to get into this mod pack, we need to get ourselves a meteorite compass. And to do this, we need to get ourselves a charger. The charger is pretty easy to go ahead and make. This is how you make it, it's just copper and iron. And then we need to power it with some kind of source. I'm using a creative energy cell, but you can use pretty much any kind of energy source to power it. Then from there, what we need to do is we need to get ourselves a compass, which is also very easy to get. We need to drop the compass into the charger. And this is going to get us the meteorite compass. Now the meteorite compass is used for acquiring quartz, certus quartz, and this is essential for pretty much every single thing inside of the game. So the way that it works is you're going to go ahead and follow where the compass tells you to go, and it's going to direct you to a meteorite. Now the chances are you've probably seen one of these meteorites around, and if you look on your map, it's going to be a massive crater in the ground that looks like this. And inside, you're going to see a meteorite that looks something like this. And what you need to do is you need to basically go inside the meteorite here. And you're going to be given, or there's going to be, certus quartz inside. So what you can do is, on top of each of these blocks, you can go ahead and mine these here. Just like this. And you can also mine these blocks here. Now, I would recommend mining every single one apart from the ones that are flawless. A flawless budding Certus Quartz uh, crystal or whatever it is, is going to basically keep generating Certus Quartz forever. But if you break it, it's going to uh, deteriorate, The it's going to get more damaged and it will eventually um, break. So these ones here, the ones that are damaged and chipped, all of that, they're already kind of broken. So they're going to generate Certus Quartz for a bit, but they're not going to generate forever. So you can actually just pick them up um, and take them to your base. These ones, the flawless ones, you want to um, leave them there until a bit later in the game when we can transport them safely. So go ahead and mine all of them, but the flawless ones, you can use Silk Touch. I think this will help to keep the quality good. And basically we're going to take these back to our base so that we can have a constant supply of Certus Quartz. Inside of the Meteorite as well, you're also going to get yourself some presses. And these presses are used to uh, basically turn bits of silicon into chips. Well, not just silicon, other things into chips. And these are needed for things like storage drives and etc. You can also go ahead and craft these chips. You can use uh, Certus Quartz Essence which you're going to get from Mystical Agriculture. And if you combine those with different things, you're going to be able to craft them. So you can see one requires diamond, one's gold, one's silicon. And these are basically used to help create the chips that we need to build a lot of the things here. Now these various chips are going to be used inside of an inscriber. And the way that it works is you go ahead and you put your press into one of these slots. And then you put your material in this slot here. We can go here to where it says show recipes and it basically shows us how to make different things. So to make a printed engineering circuit, we're going to need the engineering press and a diamond. And as you can see, you can just keep going through here to see the different recipes. These are all very useful for um, making different things in the game. So just, you know, keep this into account, take this into account that you're going to need this a lot and you can refer back to this bit here to see how to make things. Now something else you're going to need to make throughout the game is, is charged Certus Quartz Crystals and this is required to go ahead and make Flux Crystals which are also essential for the game. Now to charge a Certus Quartz Crystal is very easy, you just want to place it in the charger and it should go ahead and very quickly it should charge it like that and you're going to see it's kind of just got like an animation over it which means that it's charged. And we can go ahead and use that to turn it into a Flux Crystal here. And these are essential for a lot of the recipes inside of the game as well. So to go ahead and turn the Charged Certus Quartz Crystal into a Flux Crystal, we need to do this. Grab ourselves a uh, infinite water source on the floor here. And you want to go ahead and chuck in a char Charged Crystal, 
another quartz, and a redstone dust. And that's going to go ahead and give you two Fluix crystals, which we can go ahead and use for our crafting materials. As you make your way through the mod pack, you're going to realize that you need a lot of these. You're going to need a lot of Surtis Quartz, you're going to need a lot of crystals, and a lot of charged crystals here. So, we can go ahead and we can accelerate the process of that with this thing called a Growth Accelerator. And the Growth Accelerator can be made like this. Um, not too difficult, to be honest. And this will basically allow us to grow the crystals a lot quicker. We're also going to want to get ourselves a wrench, and we need to get ourselves this one here, which is the Certus Quartz wrench. Um, this is made just like this, with this pattern. And this will allow us to basically change the direction that this is facing. As you can see here, this top one here is an input, and there's also one at the bottom which is also another input here. So one's for power, and one is also for putting the block on. What we can do now is we can use this wrench here to basically change the direction of this and you might need to do it a few times until it actually faces this way. Uh, it can take quite a few attempts, there we go. And what we can do here is we can grab the, um, the quartz block that we had earlier and we can place it here and what you'll notice is that it's going to start getting powered by the energy cell. It will start sort of, um, you can see like, I guess electricity is coming out of it. And this is going to basically allow us to quickly grow the Certus Quartz bud, just like this. Now I'm using the Flawless Budding um, Quartz here. You'll probably not have this right now. But basically this is going to allow us to grow these very quickly instead of having to wait ages for them to grow. So this is a very, very useful early game thing that you should get, just because it will speed up the process of getting the Certus Quartz. Now there's a pretty cool way you can actually automate this whole process. Um, it allows you to basically automatically uh, break it once it's done. So what you want to do is grab yourself a ME Annihilation Plate. And you don't have to do this immediately, you can do this a bit further on, but I thought I'd show you now. And then you want to go ahead and grab yourself some kind of smart cable here. And then you want to connect it up to either a barrel or a chest. I'm just going to go ahead and put a barrel up here. And you're also going to want to get yourself some kind of storage bus. So um, we can just use this storage bus here and connect that up just like this. And now lastly we just need to connect this up with some kind of power here. And if we use this, it's going to be able to power it and it's also going to be able to transport it. So you can see now that the way this works is it's going to go ahead and the growth device is going to go ahead and grow the Certus Quartz on here. And then as it grows, this is going to basically harvest it, and it's going to go into the barrel here. So it's a pretty cool device, and you can also uh, set this up with multiple different sort of routes here if you wanted to. So I could have, um, if I wanted to connect this up here, and connect up like this. So once it's ready to harvest, it can go ahead and do so. I believe I might need it like this actually. This is a cool way that once it's ready, it's going to go ahead and harvest it. That's not working because I'm using a annihilation plate. I need, I'm using a storage bus. I need to use an annihilation plate. And now, basically, when this grows, it's going to harvest it. So this is a cool sort of system you can set up to automate the um, collection and the production of Certus Quartz. So I'd recommend setting this up at some point just to help you out. Okay, so now that we've covered how to actually go ahead and get the resources needed, let's talk about how to actually go ahead and digitize your storage, as I'm assuming that's probably why you're here. So we first of all need to get ourselves some storage cells, and storage cells come in different sizes. Uh, I think it starts at 1k, so this is a 1k cell here, and I believe it goes, well it goes up to creative, but you can get some absolutely huge ones and the bigger they are the more they can store. Now to go ahead and create this you're going to need quartz glass, iron ingots, redstone dust and then you're going to need a storage component. Now here I'm using the 1k storage component as this is the uh, easiest one to get and you're going to need all of these resources we talked about earlier including the logic processor um, and this can be made uh, in the inscriber with a logic circuit and a silic uh, printed silicon, which again, if you go into here, you'll be able to click through and see the recipes for it. So once you've gone ahead and grabbed yourself a cell, 
what we can do is we can set up the most basic kind of storage possible which just uses a chest and a terminal so we're going to first of all need to get ourselves an me terminal um, you can get yourself any one or you can just start with the most basic one which is just me terminal but you can get crafting terminals as well which allows you to craft uh, but just start off with whatever you want and then you also want to get yourself an me chest i believe it's called uh, this one here and all we need to do is we need to connect the chest up to power we need to go ahead and add the crafting terminal uh, we might want to also add some kind of cable to it it doesn't have to necessarily be a smart cable let's just add a cable here add the terminal here just like this and now what we can do is inside the me chest we can add our storage cell and we can start storing things in here so now i can just put all of these in here and I've just digitized it and what you can do is you can hover over here and it will tell you how much is used I believe because I'm connected up to the barrel right now it's actually going to be using that so if I just disconnect the barrel right now it's now going to only use this so if I put items in here it should tell us yeah so there's 212 out of 1024 bytes used um, I believe one item equals one byte and we've got 22 out of 20, uh, 63 types so this basically means you can have 22 well, it means I've got 22 different items here, and it means I can have 63 different types of item in here. So it means that that is the maximum amount I can have in terms of different items. So that's the most basic setup you can have here. But now I'll talk to you a bit more about the advanced setups or how to progress from this. Now let me briefly just cover how the terminal actually works itself. You can go ahead and you can click an item into it. So you can just click it in like that. You can shift click it like this. And uh, you can, it's basically the same as like a normal chest. You can right click, you can shift click to get stacks out, just like that. You can also search in here. So, you know, chest, that's going to show me everything that has a chest involved in it. Um, that's one thing you can do with it. Now, you've also got your sorting here. So you can sort by name, by mod, by item number, that kind of thing. Uh, you can change the view. So stored, crafted and craftable, but craftables for uh, crafting, which we'll talk about later. You can filter by type, so maybe you've got fluids. Uh, you can change the sort order. You can change the terminal settings here, which uh, you can look into if you want. And you also have your styles here, so uh, you can change how the style is. If you want it like a big terminal with loads of items on show, you can do that if you want to. Or you can have it all the way small like this. You can also go ahead and use the crafting here, just like normal. Uh, that's if you've got yourself a crafting terminal. But the terminal is actually a very, very useful tool here really um, and there's there's a lot you can do with it so over here I have a more advanced sort of setup and I'll explain how I've built it and everything that it does so first of all down here we have our energy source I have a creative energy cell just to make it easier for me but you'll have to put your kind of power source and you can go ahead and connect that up to your uh, ME glass cable you can use the Fluix one here uh, that's the most basic one you can use. Above that we have this here which is the controller. So the controller works by basically allowing you to have a full system which all connects up to, uh, to, uh, to each other and it means that it all integrates nicely. So what I've done next to that is I've added some cables over here and then we have this thing called an ME drive. Now an ME drive works similar to the chest but it allows you to put multiple different discs in there so you can have multiple different um, amounts of storage. So inside here you can put, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, so you can put ten different disks inside of here, which will all connect up to the system. And we can put different size disks in here as well, so it doesn't have to be 1k. This one is a 65536k one, which is a lot of items. Above that I've got the crafting terminal, which I showed you earlier. This just allows us to craft inside of it. Something to note is that you can put multiple of these on the system. So we could put multiple ME drives on here, all filled with um, different disk drives if we wanted to. We also here have the pattern encoding terminal. So this is for if you want to go ahead and you want to do crafting inside of your terminal, but you want to do it automatically. So this is a pretty cool feature and I'll explain to you how it works now. As you can see here inside of my terminal, when there's an item that has a plus icon next to it, it means I can craft it. So if you see here diamond pickaxe, let's say I want one, if I have the materials for it, but I don't have it, I can click on it and I can select how many I want to craft. So let's say I want to craft one, I can press next, I can press start, and that's going to craft me a diamond pickaxe there, which has now been crafted. And to do this, you actually need a few items, but it's very, very useful, especially for repetitive processes. 
You first of all need a pattern encoding terminal, and this will allow you to encode patterns onto blank patterns, and that means that you can use them over and over again. So we also have to get ourselves some blank patterns. This is what they look like here. And to craft them, this is how you craft them. And what we can do is we can go ahead and let's say we want to um, set up sticks for auto crafting. We would go ahead and get the items that we need for it. And then we would go ahead and select it onto the crafting table mode, so the crafting patterns. We'd go ahead and put the sticks in, or the, the uh, recipe in here, and this will show us the output. And then we want to go ahead and place one of our blank patterns in here and encode the pattern. So now once we've got that, this here is the encoded pattern of sticks. So it means that we'll be able to use this over and over again. Now before I use this, I'll show you that you can also do this with stuff like processing. So if you want to um, smelt something, for example, you could go ahead and put a cobblestone in here. The difference with processing is you have to put the output that you're expecting. So for the input, I want cobblestone. For the output, I want stone. And I put a blank pattern in here like that. And now we've got the processing for stone. If you put the recipe in wrong, it's not going to work, so keep that in mind. You've also got it for things like smithing tables and stone cutters. But processing doesn't just mean craft uh, furnaces. It can be anything, so it could be stuff like the inscriber. You could automate the inscriber, as this is a process. Um, but I have a video a bit more in depth about how that all works if you want to watch it. So next to that, we need to go ahead and create ourselves a processing unit. And here I have a crafting co-processing unit. And above that, I have a crafting storage. This is required to go ahead and make the craft happen. So I'd recommend having those there um, and connecting up with the cable. Now next to it, what you're going to need to connect up as well is you need to have a ME pattern provider. This will allow us to provide the patterns that we've just created and we need a molecular assembler. So a molecular assembler is basically the thing that's going to craft it for you. And essentially what you need to do is put the pattern provider on top of the molecular assembler and you need to go ahead and put your blank pattern in it. So for example, we can put our stick pattern in that we've just created and this will, this will now allow us to automatically craft sticks with the molecular assembler. So if we went back over here, what we can do now is if I take all of the wood out here, all of the sticks out here, we can now go ahead and craft them automatically. We can select the amount, we can press next. I don't have the ingredients needed, so I'd have to go in and add the ingredients. So let me just go ahead and add the wood. I now go ahead and craft 10 of them, press next, start, and that's going to automatically start crafting the sticks inside of the molecular assembler. Now you can also do this with other things, as I said, so if you wanted to, you could do this with a furnace. Um, so I'd have to connect up a furnace, and it's a little bit different with this, as you have to have an input and an output. Uh, you have to have some kind of um, bus to go in here, and you need some kind of export system. But I actually have a bit more of an in-depth video about how to automate the crafting and stuff inside of AE2. But that's basically how to set up your first uh, system inside of Applied Energistics. It's just a complete beginner's tutorial. There's way more advanced things you can do, such as setting up things uh, wirelessly, uh, all that kind of stuff. But I can go into a more advanced video if you'd like me to do that, then just comment down below. But if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below that helped, and let me know if there's any other videos you'd like me to make about Minecraft, or any other game in particular. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.